Welcome, brethren. This is Emmanuel with the uh, Biblical Science of the Day. Put, the Lord put on my heart so, a very serious problem. Uh, this video I'll dedicate is dedicated just to save brethren. Save brethren because uh, you guys seem to uh, forget how powerful the devil is and how smart he is. Uh, and that's proof in the ignorance I see out there with uh, heresies and false doctrine. And this is all among saved brethren because. I do believe most of these brethren are saved, but uh, it's my duty to reprove because that's the uh, the scripture has four purposes. It's very clear. It's for uh, reproof, instruction in right righteousness, doctrine, and correctness. That's all. It, that's it. Use it for anything more. It's not the scripture. You're not using it lawfully. For the law is good if it is used lawfully. Got to use it lawfully. Your hermeneutics has to be on point. Like, you're supposed to know that you read the Bible literally until, obviously, you get a heartfelt conviction by the Holy Ghost. It's allegorically. We don't do that. We do the opposite. You have to be Berean, uh, comparing Scripture with Scripture. Among the saved brethren, we don't do that. And uh, the reason why we allegorize the Scripture is its origin, which is this... Uh, guy in Alexandria, Egypt, he used the purpose why we allegorize scripture and we don't even know it. Because I just had a talk on a blog about a guy that I, do, I probably, he's probably most certainly not saved. I say he's not saved. We were arguing back and forth on how do we pray. I said, S simple, this is a no-brainer. I knew this before I was saved. You pray to the Father in Jesus' name. He said, no. He said, you don't have to say in Jesus' name. You just pray the actions, and God assumes that you automatically pray in Jesus' name. And I sent him off scripture after scripture saying, Whatever you do in my name, I will also do it. Pray for the Father, and in my name, he will also give it to you. We're going back and forth, but like I said, with Christians, with people on blogs, I go with Titus. Heretic after first second ammunition reject, which I did. Uh, he came with, no, you you pray, just by you know calling his name. You don't have to say Jesus' name. I rejected it, and then he came again. I rejected him, so I'm not gonna go further. Do not answer a f uh, fool according to his folly, unless you be liking unto him. They'll drag you down to their level. That's their, that's their point. You just like to argue. Debate is sin, by the way. When it's debating nonsense, when you go back and forth, and you're gonna not gonna you either not gonna agree with each other. So what's the point? The Bible says, "Swift to hear, slow to speak." You know, when you say you should be talking less, listen more. So I didn't choose to go on, but anyways, after giving scripture after scripture, you press pray in Jesus' name. He called me, uh, well, not directly, but he said. I'm using a magical incantation. So when I say Jesus' name, I'm like a charmer, which the Bible condemns. Praise their Father in Jesus' name. I mean, this is common sense, no brainer, but not to him. He's obviously not saved. He also used Yahweh in his response. Do I even need to go that, that way? You don't use Yahweh, is not scriptural, it's Jehovah. So, I'm not going to respond to him. If any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. He's obviously be ignorant. Let him speak not into the ears of a fool, for you will despise the wisdom of thy words. On and on. Not supposed to argue out there, brethren. Okay? Mark them that cause divisions contrary to doctrine and avoid them. You're supposed to talk less, not more. Okay? So, what, why is he confused about the prayer? Well, yeah, he's, he's unsaved. Let's say for slight possibility you are saved. He doesn't read the scripture literally. He doesn't. He allegorizes it. That's the only way. If you don't know how to pray in the Father in Jesus' name, that you have to say Jesus' name. I'm not saying I'm saying in your head, not outwardly. Then again, that's probably why he was confused. He probably thought I meant to say it outwardly. Well, you can say outwardly in words or in your head. But he had to say in Jesus' name. No, I'm the I'm the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That includes prayer. That's what I said to him. Okay? That includes prayer. You don't do nothing to 
no request of Allah unless Jesus is in there. As you do in His Spirit, which is the Holy Ghost. You don't do nothing. Saved or not saved. All works done in the flesh and your own power will be burned in the judgment seat. You do everything through the Spirit. Everything. So, yeah, I'd like to talk about three things today. First is origin, how we like, like to allegorize Scripture, even though if you don't know it. Unconditional election, which is the reason why we don't understand that, because we allegorize Scripture. And free will. Again, we don't understand that because we allegorize Scripture. Okay? And universal equality as well. So this might be a long video, might do two parts of it, but we'll go ahead and talk about origin. Like I said, he was this, uh, he's out of Alexandria, Egypt. You already know anybody out of there. It's no good. That's where West Carter and Hort get their teachings from. That's why Jehovah Witnesses is a satanic cult. They would agree with this guy, by the way. They don't believe in Jesus, so of course they don't pray in his name, in Jesus' name. <laughs> okay? Uh, his, he's the reason why we allegorize the scripture, even if we don't know it. I say that because we don't, because you don't respond with some such heresy like that guy did in the blog if you read it literally. I read it literally. That's the only way I know how to read it, okay? Until it's common sense that it's allegorical, like when Jesus said, He who eateth of my flesh and drinketh my blood, blood he hath eternal life. Of course, he doesn't mean that literally, even though this is passage of scriptures that the apostles and disciples thought he did. He said, what manner of man expect us to eat of his flesh? They took it literally. The devil does that on purpose. He makes you take the literally, figuratively, and the figuratively literally. That was, of course, allegorical. Of course, the Catholics take that literally through transubstantiation in the Eucharist. They take that literally. That's a fi that's figuratively. I am the door of the sheep, figuratively. When you pray to the Father, pray in Jesus' name. That's literally. He obviously didn't take that. That's literally. And if you did read the Bible literally, you're supposed to read literally until proven allegorically, just like they say you're innocent until proven guilty. But that's how I read the Bible. If we don't do that, don't even lie, we say we do. Because if we do that, you know that unconditional election is biblical 100% biblical. Do God predestinate people to hell? No. Does He predestinate people to heaven? Absolutely. Explain unborn babies. Do they have a choice? They're saved against their will. Explain the 144,000 that get saved in the tribulation. Do they have a choice to get saved? Huh? Do they have a say in their salvation? No. They're predestinated. They're, it's a done deal. Irresistible grace. I absolutely believe in irresistible, irresistible grace because they go hand in hand with unconditional election. If you believe in one, you got to believe in the other. Just like, if, just like if you're a post tribber you got to believe in replacement theology. They go hand in hand. Unconditional election and irresistible grace go hand in hand. Now you're going to say, where's the scripture for that? I'll, I'll show you the scripture, but remember what I told you. What's the point of showing you the scripture? I, do, I will do it anyways. But what's the point of showing you if you're going to allegorize it and say, no, twist the meaning of words. Okay? Devil's very smart. He's not an idiot. Okay? He knows that a lot of people are on to his Bible perversion scam, that KJV is the Bible. So he says, how do I render it useless to the people who read it? I know, make them put in their mind, allegorize. Oh, this word means this, and this word means that. Just the meaning of words. Allegorize scripture. If he does that, you might as well be reading the NIV, if you read the KJV like that. You might as well read it in NIV. If you allegorize scripture, you don't read it literally, what's the point? God means what he says. He says what he means. Heavens and earth shall pass away. My words shall never pass away. I take that literally. Remember I told you we live in a digital simulation. That everything's made out of God's word. Things are not, that are seen are temporal. Things that are not seen are internal. Things that are not seen are God's words. I take that literally. So first, first uh, topic is unconditional election. Irresistible grace. I believe God do predestinate people to go to heaven. He shows compassion, whom He will show compassion, and whom He will harden, He will harden. I take that literally. I take that as an unconditional election. He'll give you, He'll give you uh, additional grace, additional grace, because two things. He there's two ways that He could elect people. Both people are elected. Okay, there's no such thing as uh, non-elect to go in heaven. Everyone in heaven is elect. Two, there's two uh, types of elect, but they're both elect. I'm going to lose you here, but I don't care. 
Okay, I do. I, I don't seek the praise of men. I seek the praise of God. If I seek the praise of men, I probably won't even do this video. Uh, there's there's two ways of election. The, the people in heaven right now. There's there's two ways they were elected, conditionally, and unconditionally. The best way I can explain this think of think of it the Godhead. If you don't understand the Godhead, you you're gonna lose me. You're not gonna understand what I'm saying. Think of unconditional election being like the Father. In conditional election being like the son. They're both the same. I am the father, I won. They're all the same, but they're all different. Same way to conditional and unconditional election. They're both election, they're the same, but they're different. What's the difference? For knowledge, the God knowing that you're saved because he keep remember, he knows everything, he knows what you can do before you do it. That's for knowledge. He sends you the grace, the holy calling. He knows you're accepting it. That's still election. I'm just getting more specific. I'm calling it conditional election. That's the election. There's unconditional election, irresistible grace, where he knows you're not going to be saved if he doesn't give you that irresistible grace. He knows you're not going to be saved unless he predestines you to heaven. That is how you talking about he saves you against your will. Absolutely. What you're saying, your will is stronger than God's. Who are you to? God saves who he wants to save. Why? Because it pleased him. He owes his grace to no one. Okay. If I throw a birthday party to my daughter, do I have to throw the birthday party for everybody in the block? If I choose to give a, a gift j just for whatever to my aunt, do I have to give all of my family a gift? Why? No. But that's what we're saying when we say, no, we don't believe in unconditional election. This is amongst the brethren. A lot of brethren, which is unbelievable, do not believe in unconditional election. You don't have to believe it. I know it's true. Like I said, I'll get to scripture, but you're just going to twist the words, but... I'm giving you a side note, but I'll, I'll go to scripture. There's tons of scripture. You have to explain away tons of scripture, uh, explaining away unconditional election. This is the saved brethren. So like I say, if you're unsaved, you don't care about this stuff. So, yeah, predestinate is God's willing you to be saved. It's not his foreknowledge. We, Of course, we confuse the both together. We don't even know what predestinate means. If you do, you agree with unconditional election. Okay? Foreknowledge is, it, it, it's me seeing into the future, okay, I know he's going to be saved. So I know he's going to, of course, he's going to accept my calling. I'm God. I know he's going to accept my calling. But I know he's going to reject it several times. But I know on the fifth time I send my grace, he's going to accept it. So I'm not going to harden this heart because he's going to accept it. This guy, no, he's not going to accept it. I'll send his grace anyways because I died for every man. I tasted death for every man. But I know he's not going to accept it. I have foreknowledge, but I'll send it anyways. So, he, so they're without excuse. Hmm? So they're without excuse, Romans 1.20. I'm sending him his grace. Okay, he rejected him. How do he reject it? Remember, I'm God. Because I know I'm, I'm God. I know he's going to reject So I'm going to harden his heart. Show compassion to who I show compassion. And whom I will harden, I will harden. Okay? God's not condemning you. He, you were condemned already. He was not believed he condemned already. He's not sending you to hell. You're going there on your own volition. Okay? But uh, there are people that, for, because he does everything to his counsel of his own will, because they pleased him in the pleasure according to his own will, he predestines. David's son, or did his David's son say, yeah, I chose, I want to be saved, I want to go to heaven? No. Chose to save David's son, which he killed at birth, because it pleased him. Okay, the Jews, uh, 144,000 uh, uh, sealed. Do they have a say in their uh, uh, salvation? No. Irresistible grace. They're sealed. Chosen. Remember, I take that word literally. Chosen means chosen. God says what he means. It means what he says. Chosen means chosen, not called. Okay? There's a lot of instances in the Bible which I'll get you. We're using the word called and chosen. They're not the same words. You know, they have the same results. <laughs> See how I said this is confusion? Conditional and unconditional election. They're not the same. In, in roles, but the same in the same in results. Kind of like the father and the son. They're not the same in in the roles. The father's greater than I, but in the same in status, in essence. Okay, <clears throat> a good example is the the Bible itself. <clears throat> I'll get to scripture in a moment, but I just want to set the foundation here. <clears throat> the Bible itself, the Old Testament, uh, was written by uh, Old Testament was written by the Jews. Well, the whole Bible written by the Jews, what I'm talking about. That's in translation purposes. Old Testament was written by the Jews. It was God's chosen people. They were 
They were uh, predestinated, not called. He's saying uh, God willed the Jews to be his chosen people and trade about absolutely. He predestined them. 140,000 in Revelation. That's what he says in the Bible in Romans. I will send up send the Bible, send the, the gospel into the unto the Gentiles and they will hear it. They will hear it. Will. That's not unconditional election. That's conditional election. They will hear it. For knowledge. They'll hear it because I, I know they're gonna hear it. So the gospel is rejected by by the the Jews. I'm not talking about writing the Old Testament. The Old Testament was predestined. God predestined the Jews to write it. Moses, yeah, I do believe he sent all the people that wrote the Bible. He predestined them to do that. Predestinated. I do believe that. But obviously not. He didn't predestinate them to obey the gospel and accept Jesus Christ as his king the first time he came. Obviously he didn't do that. The gospel was conditional. Jesus Christ sent, God, Father sent the, his son to uh, to send his grace for them to accept him as king the first time around because he didn't he was just sent to die on the cross he was died sent to establish his millennial kingdom that was obviously conditional because if it was unconditional we already be in the millennial kingdom right now that was conditional that's how God does something God predestinates something he foreknew he does that with everything in the Bible if you really know your Bible right you divide the word of truth you know that he uh, he predestined for for the Old Testament to be written. Moses, Moses didn't have a choice. He predestined. He didn't foreknew. Or I'm not just saying more. I'm saying everyone that wrote the, the Old Testament, he predestinated that to be true, to write the Bible, to write the Old Testament. But he did not predestinate the gospel. He foreknew the gospel. Because why? Because he knew the Jews going to reject it, and the Gentiles going to accept it. And then the Gentiles took it. They spread it across the world. World, and then. The Greeks translated, uh, wrote the New Testament. There's a perfect example of foreknowledge versus predestination. Foreknowledge is the Old Testament. Moses and everything. I'm, uh, I'm trying to get, this is very confusing. <laughs> of course. Uh, Old Testament is, is predestinated. It For the fact that it exists, it was predestination. God predestinated for the Old Testament to be written. That's predestinate. Foreknowledge is the New Testament. What's the difference? Grace and irresistible grace. Sent grace to, to to man to write the old, uh, uh, irresistible grace to write the Old Testament, and the grace to write the New Testament. He didn't have to predestine the Gentiles to believe the gospel and write the New Testament. He foreknew it. He predestinates when you know you're gonna reject it, like he. Here's a, here's, a, here's a verse of scripture that a lot of say brethren wants to avoid like the black plague. You know, God elected the angels as well. Well, did he predestinate or foreknew? Predestinate. Why did he predestinate? Because all of them would have fell. God predestinate the elect angels in the Bible. Look at the scripture. I'm just going to show you the scripture of the unconditional election. That's in the Bible. Don't tell me it's not. Use a sword, so sword search of software and search the term elect angels. No one talks about that. The people that hate unconditional election. He he predestinated the angels not to fall. Because if he didn't, all of them would have fell. But no one talks about that. No one everybody avoids, I'm talking to say brother. They avoid that at the black plate. Guard for new pe people and he predestinates them. It for new is grace, predestinate is irresistible grace. I'll give him another example. I will, and then I'll fought, conclude with scripture. Um, let's see you guys explain it away. The scripture I'm going to give you, because you will, because you allegorize it. If you allegorize it, you can explain away anything, just about anything. Uh, another example is the seventy week of Daniel, which is not the Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble is the last three and a half years. That's in Revelation. The holy city will be tread under for three and a half years, not seven years. So it's not called, the whole seven-year period is not called Jacob's trouble. It's called the 70-week of Daniel. Jacob's, Jacob's trouble is the last part. Well, let's look, let's look at the 70-week of Daniel. You have predestinated and foreknowledge all over the place in that period. What do you mean? The foreknowledge are the, the first half, the, which is the tribulation saints. 
God already knows who's not going to take the mark of the beast and who is going to take the mark of the beast. He already knows. He doesn't, so he doesn't have to predestinate no one to take or don't take the mark of the beast for knowledge. Okay? He already knows. This is the Gentiles I'm talking about. Tribulation saints and the Gentiles. God always divides people, Jews and Gentiles. And Paul would preach to the Jew first and then the Gentile. To the Jew first and then the Gentile. That's how God always acts. So the first half, three and a half period with the tribulation saints, he is, through his foreknowledge, he already knows who's going to take the mark, who doesn't. Okay? He already knows. That's conditional election. What's the condition? Don't take the mark and you'll be saved. Get it? Conditional. Condition. We like to change the meaning of words. Conditional means uh, you can do something under one condition. Don't do this and you get it. Or do this and you'll get it. So God said you will be saved on one, on one condition. Don't take the mark. Conditional election. He has four knowledge, so already, he already knows who's going to take the mark now. Conditional election. What's the unconditional connection part? The, the 144,000 Jews. Tell me, do they have a choice? If I'm a one that's sealed with, with, with God seals his name on my forehead, can I go? No, I don't want to be saved. No. Choose not to be saved. Well, you're saying your will is stronger than God's? Whoever does not believe in unconditional election, that's what they're saying. You say man's will is stronger than God's will? The Bible said, even God at his foolishness is wiser than that man. Even at his weakness, God is still stronger than man. Those 144,000 Jews are unconditionally elected, predestinated before the foundation of the world. I read that scripture in Ephesians literally. I don't allegorize it. He means what he says and says what he means. He predestinate. Why did he do that? Because it pleased them. God doesn't owe his grace to anyone. He doesn't have to do nothing. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. He can do anything he wants. He doesn't owe his grace to anyone. And he can stop giving anyone his grace at any time. Okay? So, and I also believe not only there's, there's condition, uh, predestinated Jews that are saved, but Gentiles too. People that's, that, that, the reason why Jesus Christ hasn't come yet, we're waiting people to know they're saved. We endure all things for the elect's sake. So you wonder why Jesus didn't come yet? That's the reason right there. That scripture right there. For we endure all things for the elect's sake so they can too may obtain salvation. So I believe with the Gentiles, there are unconditionally elected Gentiles and unconditionally elected Gentiles. There are Gentiles he foreknew. He's not sending no irresistible grace. He's, he foreknew them. I'm going to send this grace to this guy. I know why. I know he's going to accept the holy calling because I know he's going to be saved. Why? Because I'm God. I'm all known. But this, this is something special about this guy. I don't know what it is. I don't know what I like about him. I'm not saying he's worthy. Don't get my words twisted. I'm not saying he's worthy of salvation or he's a great guy. No. It just pleases me to save him. So I know he's going to reject my calling because I'm God. So I'm going to make it irresistible grace. I'm going to predestinate him. Why you say that? Because I think I was, I'm was i one of them. I believe I'm the unconditional elect. I believe because I I should have been saved a long time ago. And when it came over me, when I fell on the rock and it broke me, I, could, I felt I couldn't resist it. That's why. So I'm talking from experience. Don't tell me there's not Christians out there. There's some Christians where they're just reading the Bible and they're, hmm, you know, I'm a rotten sinner. Blah, 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 blah. Conditional election. Why? God foreknew that you're going to come to that point, that you're going to come to the broken state. I'm not saying that's a work. I'm just saying God didn't even need to send his irresistible grace to you. He foreknew you're going to accept the gospel. That's not me. Because I repeatedly slapped, slapped the gospel repeatedly. God said time and time again, the people preaching the gospel, and I repeatedly slapped them away, slapped them away. So explain how am I saved? Oh, you're not saved. Trust me, I'm saved. Okay. For for when the when I found, when I put my spirit in him, I will cause him to walk in my judgments and my statutes. Okay. What does that mean? The Holy Ghost controls you if you yield it to him. I was reluctant uh, to to do this video. Reluctant means unwilling. By the way, reluctant. You like to probably change the meaning of that word too. But I don't do the will of me. I do the will of who has sent me, like Jesus Christ said. My meat is to do of the one who sent me. So, yeah. To to wrap it up. 
It's about unconditional election. Think of it, the best way I explain it, think of it as a car. Two types of cars. What do you mean? Standard and automatic. Are they, are they not cars between the two? Yeah. Aren't they the same cars? Don't they both have four wheels and they both have engines in it? Yeah. But one standard and was automatic. That makes them different, don't they, in that aspect? Yeah. Father and the son, aren't they the same? Yeah. Don't tell me they, they're not different in roles. What do you use, does you tell what the father what to do? No, the father's greater than I. I do the will of my father. I don't do the will of my own. So think of standard. You know, I'm talking about a car. Standard transmission in a car as conditional election. Unconditional election is automatic. Standard is resistible grace. Automatic is irresistible grace. Okay? People in heaven are all our elect. Don't twist my words, brethren. Don't pervert the words of the righteous with the Bible. You know, you get judged if you twist people's words, the righteous. I'm just say, People in heaven right now, they all elect. I'm talking, I'm talking about the perspective. There's two perspectives. Perspectives from our eyes and from God's eyes. From my perspective, there are two elects. There are conditional and unconditional elect in heaven. But with God, from His eyes, they're just elect. Why? Because to God, there is really no difference between foreknowledge and predestination because if I'm God, there's no difference between me, for, uh, between predestination and foreknowledge because I'm God. I don't think you're going to get saved. I know you're going to get saved. So there's no difference. But within our eyes, there is a difference. Why? Because we don't have foreknowledge. That's why. Okay? You don't have the right to say, I know for a fact you're saved, or I know for a fact you're not saved, because you're not God. You don't know the hearts of men. Only God can use that word no. I know he's saved, aren't I? Only you're supposed to use the word no, because 1 John 5, 13, you know that you have eternal life. So the only pe person on the planet that knows he's saved is you, the guy in the mirror. No one has the right to say, oh, I know for a fact he's saved, or I know for the fact he's not saved. You have no right to use the word no. You can say believe. You can say truly believe. You can't say no. Because if you, you must be Jesus Christ. Because only God knows the hearts of men. No. No and believe are not the same thing. But we like to group the, those words. So people in heaven, they're conditional and unconditional elect. There, from my perspective. But to God, they're all the same. He just wants you to know that. He just wants you to know that, hey, for some I predestinate and some I foreknew. That's all. That's what God wants you to know. He wants you to know that. He already knows from his perspective, elect are elect. But he wants to know you to know uh, some people are predestined, some people are foreknew they'd be saved. Why? Because it's all in Scripture. He uses those very words. If God just foreknew, because that's what people say, there's no such thing as unconditional election. If God just says foreknew, I foreknew him to be saved, why doesn't he just use that in the, the Bible? God is not an author of confusion, but of peace. Why didn't he just use foreknowledge? Why am I seeing predestinate all throughout the Bible? Why didn't he just say foreknew and call? Why did he just use those words? Why does he have to say choose and predestinate? Which means irresistible grace. That means you have no say in the matter. Why does he use those words? Don't worry, I'll get to scripture. There's a lot of scripture. Okay? Why does he have to say that? Okay? So, when I will get to a scripture, like I said, you twist it, what's the use? But go ahead anyway, because we're supposed to, you know, use scripture. And by the way, I did this in a previous video, but I just thought of doing this in more detail because there's a lot of lost brethren out there. Some are truly saved that don't believe in unconditional election, where if that's true, God wouldn't get used to predestinate all around the Bible. Predestinate is not foreknowledge, they're not the same. Predestinate means you have no say. I willed you, you're going to do it. He does not predestinate people to hell. I'm not saying that. He predestinates people to heaven. That's what I am saying. I'll get to his scripture. So let's go to Romans 8.28. Romans 8.28. Now, I know doctrinally it's probably not uh, doctrinally Romans. Remember, it's to the Gentiles. Remember, you can use the Bible doctrinally and also instruction for righteousness. So there's probably people twisting it. Oh, it's not meant for those people. It doesn't matter. You can use instruction for righteousness. Hebrew is one of my favorite books, and I know it's not towards me, but I can use it for instruction for righteous, righteousness. Romans 8, 28, And we knew that all things work together for good to them that loved God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Called. 
That's conditional election to his purpose. Now, is he willing them to be saved? No, I'm not saying that. Call. I can only call if I'm calling someone. It's like it's like when I call someone on the phone. Do I know they're gonna pick up? No. If I'm God and I'm calling you, do I know if you're gonna pick up? I'm talking about his election. Yes. Do God? Do people call? Do God call people that he know they know they're not gonna accept his grace? Well, of course, because he he died for the world. He does it anyway, so you have no excuse. So I'm God. Think of a phone call as being saved. I'm God. I'm calling this guy, and I'm God. I know he's not gonna be saved. Why? Because I'm willing him to be not saved? No, I'm not willing him. God doesn't will no one to be condemned. They're condemned already if they not believe. But I know he's not going to accept my phone call, but I'm going to call him anyways. Why? So he has no excuse. Now, do I have to call him? No, I don't owe his grace. I don't owe him grace. Remember, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm comparing calling a person as saving. I'm God. Let me call this fella. I know he's going to be saved after 10 times of calling him, of course. Why well, I'm going to call him 10 times? Because I know on the 10th time he's going to accept my calling. Why? Because I'm God. I foreknew it. Call. Some people, he looks on them and say, I'm God. I already know he's not going to accept my grace. I have to send him errors of some grace. So I'm not going to call him. Through my will, he's just going to be broken. I'm going to send irresistible grace because I'm God. If I want, I can predestinate everyone to be saved right now. Everyone. You know that? God can predestinate of course, he's not going to do it because he already says in the Bible, wide is the gate to destruction. He can't deny himself. But I'm just saying hypothetically, if you want, he can predestinate anyone to be saved right now. Ah, you're gonna, your will stronger than God, but he's not going to do that. So there's a scripture right there. That's conditional election called, show me unconditional. The very next verse. Romans 8, 29, for whom he did foreknew, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the first among among many brethren. Well, there you go. See your heretic. He used foreknew and predestinate. They're the same thing. No, they're not. Remember, remember, think of foreknew as being the, like the son. Compare that word as like the son and predestinate like the father. They're both the same, but they're both very different. This is not true. The same thing for those words there. In a way, he did foreknew who he predestinated. Because, because at the end result, they're both saved anyway. So in God's eyes, there is no difference. He wants to know you. He wants to make you aware of the difference. Okay? This is unconditional election. Yeah, I know there's foreknew in the passage, but it's still unconditional election. Who he did foreknew, he also did predestinate. Well, of course he foreknew what he predestinated. Because he's God. He's all-knowing. It, 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 my, my gripe is, if you don't believe in predestination and unconditional election, why do you have to use that word predestinate? Why didn't you say foreknew? That's all I'm saying. Okay? Predestinate don't mean foreknowledge. Even though it results in election. Both of them do result in election. Predestinate does not mean foreknowledge. It means you do not have a say in the matter. I'll send you irresistible grace. You're saved. And I'll go throughout more Bible. If that's not good enough, let's see you explain away this allegorically. Ephesians 1.11 In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. God's not the author of confusion, right? That's correct. This is confusing to me. I'm someone that does not believe in unconditional election. I'm just saying hypothetically. Why does he... I do believe in. Why does he have to use predestinated? Oh, let me explain it away. That's what say brethren do. Let me explain away predestinate. Oh, that means foreknowledge right there. Allegorize. No. Predestinate means un irresistible grace is required. Okay. Okay, God predestinates people to be saved. Explain the Jews, explain unborn babies, explain me. He predestinates people to be saved. He does not does not have to predestinate people to be going to hell because they're going there anyways. He foreknew they're going to hell. He takes the death for any man, every man. So explain away that verse. He predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the comfort of his own will. Why didn't you just use foreknowledge then? Okay, that's all I'm saying. Let's keep going.
Let's keep going here. I know I got a lot. Ephesians 1 5 having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will Ephesians 1 5 funny that sounds like Ephesians 1 11 you think God wants to get this point across I just looked down and say that's the same verse no it isn't Ephesians 1 11 Ephesians 1 5 they, they almost sound identical why because they both say predestinate Ephesians 1 5 predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the pleasure of his own will. That's not fair. Why does God choose people to be saved? Because it pleased them. Who are you to tell God who he wants to save or not? Like I said, if I want to give my honor present, do I have to give all my honor present? That's not fair. Why are you showing favoritism? God's not a respecter of persons. Well, in this case, he is. I'm sorry. People like to hide behind that verse. Remember, don't use the Bible as a sword. Use it as a shield. God's no respect of a person. That's correct. That means he'll send a Jew to hell like he'll send a Gentile to hell. But he's a respect of a person when it comes among the elect. Don't tell me he isn't. Okay? He is showing favoritism there because that's why he predestinates people to whom I show compassion, the other whom I will harden. That's not fair. That sounds like you send them to hell. No, that's what they want. God hardens the heart of people that who hardens their own heart. He hardened Pharaoh's heart because he hardened his own. God will give you what you want. You don't want you sin away your data grace. You reject the gospel. You you harden your heart. Let me help you out there. Let me harden your own heart. He's not predestinating your hell. That's what you want. So God is a respected person. Some unfortunately with election. Sorry, brethren. Talking to say, brother, he is a respect of persons when it comes to election. He foreknew and predestinated people. Explain that verse. Let's keep going. Got a lot. I think God wants to get this point across. Uh, First Thessalon First Thessalonian, First Thessalonian, one four. Knowing, brethren, beloved, your election, God, knowing. God wants to know you to know that you're elect, and I believe. Don't I'm not dogmatic. There's some people saying, you don't know if you're unconditional elect until you die. That's debatable. That, I'm not being dogmatic. How do you know for sure if you're conditionally elect or unconditional elect? How do you know if you foreknew your election or you predestinated it? I don't know. Eric Phelps says, you know when you die? That's what he said. I'm saying, you, you, I think you can know because the Holy Ghost speaks in you and he, he convicts you. Remember, the Holy Ghost makes utterance utterance for you and he he... he He's the one that chooses your words if you yield to him. So I believe you do know if you're conditionally elected or unconditionally elected. That scripture right here talks to me. Remember, scripture talks to you. It's alive. It's God breathed. Knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. Knowing. God wants oh, that means God wants you to elect. Yes. But I do believe, take it further. He wants you to know if he condition unconditionally elect you, irresistible grace. I think he wants you to know if you were foreknew. I said, I'm, I, I believe, I say believe, remember, I'm using the word believe, not know, I believe I was unconditionally elected. It's like I said, I should have been saved a long time ago. I should have been saved a long time ago. Excuse me, put charger. I should have been saved a long time ago. I received the gospel several times, and, and then I just was broken. Crying like a baby, he pricked my heart. He granted repentance. Like I said, don't. I know you guys are always calling me a heretic. He's preaching work salvation. No, no. How I speak work salvation, if I tell you, you repentance must be granted. Not earned. Don't confuse those words. Granted. That seems like you got to do something. Like you work for a paycheck. You work and you're granted a paycheck. No. God, please, God chooses to, to save people who pleases him. Not, not, not who pleases him. See, how it's very easy to twist it into work salvation. He doesn't choose people who pleases. Him. He chooses people because it pleases him. You see how these heretical Bibles, one word makes a lot of difference. I just said there, God chooses people because they please them. See how that could be in a Bible right there. Oh, these Bibles are all the same. No, that right there can damn you to hell. That change right there. He doesn't choose people who pleases him. He chooses people because it pleases him. 
to save them. God delights in saving in predestinating these people to be saved. He delights, he does all things to the according to his will. Okay, it delights him. Okay. Like I said, this confusion of unconditional action is with with Calvin. Like I said, I believe I said before Calvin, his works I believe was doctored by the Jesuits. Because we, we Christian a little leaven leaven the whole lump. Well, that's the scripture the devil likes to do. Because how do you destroy the credibility of someone? Well, two ways: you doctor their work and magnify that, or you find a piece of their work that's damnable and magnify that. What I mean by magnify? Remember, Jesuits run the world. They're the children of disobedience. A lot of people are ignorant of the true power they have. They're the ones that write history, their own history. They when I was in Catholic school, I was how do you, I was I hated God because uh, I believed in predestinating people to hell. Why? Because I was taught that in school, and I believe these brethren are also taught with John Calvin just to be fixated on the fact he predestinates people to he believes in predestinating people to hell. But stay away from the fact that he predestined people to heaven. Uh, that's heresy. They magnify the works of the just. Of the evil works, they magnify that and you throw the baby away with the bathwater. So when I talk to you about Calvin, in your mind you already think, uh, predestination is in hell. No, I want to hear it. He who answereth a folly before he heareth it's a, a matter. He who answereth a matter before he heareth is a folly and a shame up to him. So, we, a lot of people, and there's a lot of brethren use that same verse when they don't know they're being hypocritical. So I know when I, when I use the word Calvinism, uh, predestinate to hell. Let me tell the baby, you're not even hearing about all of it. Blasphemy, heresy. No. Of the tulip, total depravity. That's a heresy. Man, we're supposed to obey. You know you're supposed to obey truth, whether it be the voice of good or evil. What does that mean? It means do not discriminate where it comes from. That includes me. Truth is truth, period. I don't care if a bum on the street say it, or David Icke say it, Jordan Maxwell. Truth is truth, and I know they're hell-bound sinners. They say some truth. Why? David Icke says we live in a digital simulation. That's true. Jonah Maxwell says we're a corporation. We don't own nothing. That's true. I'm supposed to obey truth. They're not saved. Not saved. Of course I know. I'm supposed to obey truth, whether it be good or evil, whether it be coming from a good person or evil person. I'm supposed to obey truth. You're supposed to obey this truth. So we like to throw the baby with the bathwater. Oh, Calvinism. Oh, it's just predestination to hell. Throw it away. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Of the tulip, I'll tell you what's damnable. Total depravity. That's damnable heresy. Saying we can't. Uh, he written the law in our hearts and our conscience bear witness. Romans. That blows that total depravity out. So you're right about that. To tea in the tulip is damnable heresy. That's not biblical. We know we're sinners. Just like Pharaoh knew he was, just, he was about to commit adultery in Genesis. The you, unconditional election. Don't worry, I'll go, I'll provide more scripture to drive that point home. Absolutely, that's biblical. God predestinates people. Why? Because it pleases him. Who are you to tell God how to save people? The, uh, you're saying conditional because they have to have a, uh, uh, to be good or, or they have to be worthy. No, everyone's trash. There's none righteous, not one. It pleases, it pleased him to save me. Unconditionally, who are you to tell him who he doesn't owe his grace to know? So that's 100% biblical, and I'll get to that more in the Bible. L li limited atonement, of course not. I never said, of course, you're gonna twist my words. Never said I believe in limited atonement. Calvin is 100% wrong. He takes a death for every man, he died for the sins of the world. So, no, irresistible grace. Well, if you believe in unconditional election, you have to be irresistible grace because irresistible grace is how he saves people. Of course, that's biblical. He sends irresistible grace. Okay? And I already know you're going to be dogmatic. I mean, I don't think that's irresistible grace, that, that, that phrase is in the Bible. Well, funny. Free will is in the Bible. But not in the way we say. We don't have a free will. I'll get to that next. I'll tackle that next, by the way. We don't have a free will. Free will, that phrase in the Bible, is free will offering. That's the only time that phrase is in the Bible. So if you want to get dogmatic, we'll get dogmatic. I'm aware of irresistible grace. That phrase is not the Bible that I know of. But irresistible grace is biblical. That's predestinate, predestination. That's unconditional. Okay? God sends you that irresistible grace. 
that grace that cannot be resisted to be saved. Why? Because they pleased them. Not because you pleased them. You're trash. It pleased them. Pres perseverance of the saints. Absolutely biblical. You won't get saved. You won't die until you know you're saved. God will preserve you. And you won't, you won't die after you're saved until he's done with you. You know, Jesus Christ could have died. You know, Jesus Christ is elect. Do you know that? He's also a saint too. You know how many times he should have died? They was trying to stone him once. He almost they almost pushed him off a cliff. And he almost he hid it in the temple because Jews were sought to kill him. Three times. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. He loves three. Three times that I can think of, maybe more in the Bible, that he should have died. Why? Because God was preser preserving. It wasn't in his hour. His time has not come. Preservation of the saints. God preserved them. He was God's Jesus Christ is gonna die when God says he's gonna die. At night, and the exact way he's going to die. That's why they didn't break his bone because it was written. No bone of him would be broken at the cross. No bone was broken because it was written. Oh, so they're saying God predestinated. Absolutely he did. Okay. Oh, you say he predestinated his son to be killed. Absolutely not. That was foreknowledge. He did not will the Romans crucify him. He did not will the Jews to kill him. They wanted to kill him. Why he wanted to kill him? How are you sure they wanted to kill him? Because God foreknew they wanted to kill him. There's foreknowledge right there. God used foreknowledge and predestinated predestination all throughout the Bible. He foreknew his son was going to be killed. Okay? Remember, he his his purpose was not just to die on the cross, it was to establish the millennial kingdom. And they, God foreknew they would reject him the first time around. So that's why when he comes to the second coming. He's going to take it by force. I have not come to bring peace, but to bring a sword. That's how God works. He foreknew you're going to reject him, so he's going to take it by force. He foreknew I'm not going to accept his election, his, his grace, so he predestinated me. Why is it so hard to... I'm sorry, why is it so hard to, to know? Okay? You call me a heretic and everything. Well, you need to... You need to... It, handle these verses of scripture. So let's get to more verses of scripture where he uses the word predestinate. That people avoid like the black plague. Second Thessalonians I can't even pronounce that. Thessalonians 2.13 Second Thessalonians 2.13 But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you brethren, beloved of God because God hath from beginning chosen you not called. If he just elects people by foreknowledge, why does he have to confuse me and use the word called? See, I read the Bible literally. Why does he have to confuse me? God is a trickster. He's a horrible God. Why does he have to trick? Why do you just say called? Because called and chosen are not the same thing. Okay? Why does he just use calling? No, he uses the word chosen. Chosen you to salvation through the sanctification of the Spirit and the belief of truth. Chosen. Unconditional. I'll keep going. First Timothy 5.21 I charge thee before God and the, here's the one about the elect angels Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that thou observe these things without preferring one before another doing nothing by partiality. Translate God predestinate the elect, uh, the angels. He does nothing by partiality. What does that mean? Partiality means bias. So that blows Right out of the water, if you think God chose me because I must uh, did something great or I'm going to do something great. No, no. God is impartial in unconditional election because there's none righteous, not one, including the angels. He said, the elect angels that thou observe these things without preferring one before another. Okay? God means what he says and says what he means. So you're saying he predestinated the angels? Why? So they won't all fall. That's why. Is was it was there a specific angel that he wanted to choose? No, because he just said it right there. He means what he says. See, who are you to change scripture and change what words mean? The brethren are doing that right now, allegorizing it. Who are you to change scripture? He means what he says, he says what he means. God is not an author of confusion. Okay? He elected the angels, the ones he say, why? Because he pleased them. That's why. He was impartial to no angel. If he didn't do that, they all fall. They all fall. That's why. 
He did that so they all won't fall. I'll keep going. I want to. Sorry to beat a dead horse. I'm going to beat this dead horse. Because if I'm. Let's just say I'm wrong. Uh, he only, we only gets saved by four knots. You need to explain away all these verses. All these verses you got to explain away. 2 Peter 1.10. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence. Be diligently. I think God wants you to be aware of election. I think it's very important. Give diligence to make your calling and election sure. If you do these things, you will never fall. Calling. Conditional election. Chosen. Unconditional election. Foreknowledge. Conditional election. Predestination. Unconditional election. Let's keep going. I might be wrong. Then explain away these verses. Romans 9.11 For the children being not yet born. This is proof why children, unborn babies, do go to heaven. For children being not yet born, neither have done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to the election, might stand. Not of works, but him that calleth. Oh, there we go. He used call. So it must be conditional election. No. How does a baby... Remember, I told you, unconditional and unconditional election, even though they're different, they're still the same. They result in election. The father and son are different, but they're still the same. If you don't... Ex if you don't know the relationship between the Father and the Son, the Godhead, you won't understand what I'm saying. I know, even though he did not use the word predestinate in that verse, he says calleth, that's still unconditional election. Because how, how can a baby, how can a baby uh, say, I want to be saved, and how does God know the baby's going to say, I want to be saved? Baby has no choice in being saved. God says you're saved, predestinated. Like, uh, David's son. He's saved. He could have let his baby live. He should have killed David, by the way. You know that? He should have said, let his son live. Should have killed David because David killed Uriah and forced God to kill his son. You know, David was a murderer and adulterer in that act. Should have killed David. Why? Because it pleased them to let David live. Why? Because, you know, God gives you grace. God does not believe in universal equality. He does not give everybody the same grace. You get grace according to the, your faith. So you let him live. And I believe this verse, 9-11, is unconditional election. You no, know, I know he used calleth. Because it's, he's talking about babies. He unconditionally elect babies. You don't believe in unconditional election, but... Yeah, so he foreknew the baby's going to say, I want to be saved. Let me go and save you. No, he does not conditionally elect babies to salvation. He unconditionally elects them because they're babies. Romans 9.15 Whom said I have mercy on whom I'll have com mercy and compassion who I have compassion. Conditional election. That's God saying, hey, I'm impartial and I'm giving my grace. I don't owe my grace to anyone. But who I'll give grace, I'll give them until they're saved. Or I'll give them gr my holy calling just once and they can go ahead and reject it. Why? Because I know they will. And when they harden their heart, I'm going to harden their heart. God does not owe you grace to anyone. He does not give the same grace to everyone either. So, if... So... So there you have it. Let's tackle, I'll wrap it up with free will. Another heresy that the brethren are not aware of. Free will. Look, let, let's talk about, well, you keep saying, I don't see, let's be dogmatic. Is free will in the Bible? That phrase, yes. To my knowledge, it's in Ezra. When they give a free will offering in the Old Testament to God, when they used to sacrifice animals to cover their sins. No, in the Bible, it says man has a free will to sin. Man can free will do this. Man has a f That phrase is nowhere in the Bible. Just like there's nowhere saying, go, go to a church building in the New Testament. 
Just like it doesn't say that. No way in the Bible says free will this and free will that. Man has a free will to sin, free will. That phrase, man has a will. My problem is that word. You don't have a free will. If it was free, if I'm free, if I have a free will, and I can go ahead and watch pornography, that means I'm immune to anything that's going to happen to me. I'm not going to pay the price. How can you have a free will if I'm going to pay the price of chastisement? I'm not saying they're paying the price for going to hell. If I free willingly watch some pornography right now, I know I'm going to pay the price. Listen to the words we're saying. We don't listen to the words we say. Free will means you don't have to pay no consequences. So you're saying man has a free will. No, he doesn't. He has a will. He doesn't have a free will. No way in the New Testament has free will. Show me, show me some scripture where it says free will in the Bible. That phrase in the New Testament. No. Just have a will. Free will is Alistair Crowley. Do what thou will, for that's the whole of the law. Alistair Crowley. So you say you're a Satanist? Brethren? Free will is Arminian heresy. That's what free will is. Free will is the reason why a lot of people go to hell. Oh, I have a free will. That means uh, I can do whatever I want. I'm not paying the price. Well, that's not what I mean. Well, that's what you mean when you use that phrase. Free will. Man has a will. It's not free. The only man that has a free will is Jesus Christ. You know, he didn't have to go to the cross. He willingly went to the cross. If he didn't go to the cross, what, what God's going to scorn him? Okay, Jesus Christ, I'm going to send you to hell. God can't deny himself. He's not going to send his son to hell. Stephen Anderson, who says, Jesus Christ burned in hell, which is heresy for our sins. No. Jesus Christ free willed, willingly went to the cross. Why? Because... Uh, if he free willing he didn't go, there's no price to be paid. Not of him, it is. But rest assured, we would have paid the price eternity in hell. Jesus Christ is the only man that had free will. What about Adam? No. He had, Adam had no free will. He had a will. If he had a free will, he could have ate the apple and God said, Oh, don't worry about it, Adam. Yeah, Adam sinned against me, but I'm going to give him a pass. Why? Because he had free will. He's not going to pay... The consequences of his actions. Pay. Free will. You guys, we don't understand, comprehend the words we say. We really don't. Adam had no free will. If he had a free will, he should have ate the apple. God said, don't worry about it. He has no free will. You have no free will. Saved or not saved. Unsaved, you have no free will. Because if you do something, you will pay the price by punishment. Saved. If you don't have no free will. You do something, or you have the will to sin or not. Don't confuse that with free will. With saved people. You're not a servant to sin. I understand that. You're dead to sin. I understand that. But still, you don't have a free will. If you're saved and you sin, if you have a free will, then God won't punish you. You don't have to pay no consequences. I can do whatever I want. I no payment of consequences. Well, that's not what I mean. Well, then don't use that word free will. Then say will. The only difference between saved and unsaved is you have the will now. The will by the Spirit to save us. So, unsaved person, when he's at a computer, he, he has no choice. He thinks he has a choice. Illusion of choice. He has no choice. He's going to sin because of the lust of the Father he will do. But when I'm saved, I'll be like, you know, I can go ahead and watch porn if I want. But I have a heart full conviction. For me in the Bible, if I do it, I will be punished. I will pay the price. So I'm not going to do it. Oh, do I have a free will? No. I just have the will, common sense, not to do it. So this free will, which is heresy, and is universal equality, which is heresy. This is all Jesuitism. Because this is how the Jesuits love to do it. They love to doctor people's work. Like Martin Luther King. You think he's saved? No, Martin Luther King. Burning in hell. His name's not Martin Luther King. It's Michael King. They like to demonize the righteous like Martin Luther. Saying he's a heretic writing Jews in the lies, which he didn't write it. That's the Jesuits. And they like to praise the demon people, like Nelson Mandela and Martin Luther King, who's burning in hell right now. They like to raise up the, the, the evil people and put down the good people. John Calvin, was he a Jesuit courage? I, I don't know. They malign and butcher him so much, I don't know. All I know is he's right about unconditional election. And he's right about irresistible grace and preservation of the saints. Three letters of the tulip. The U, the I, and the P. 
That's biblical. Sorry if you don't get that. Maybe because you allegorize the scripture. Man, that's why. Without you not even knowing. You don't have to know that you allegorize the scripture to allegorize the scripture. Like people say, I don't believe in hell. You can go somewhere even if you don't believe in it. I don't believe I'm allegorizing scripture. You don't have to believe in something to know you're doing it. God doesn't want you to believe. He wants you to know you're reading the Bible the right way. Do not add to this book and do not take it away. God will punish you. Do not pervert the words of the righteous. That's me. Do not. If I'm right, if I'm wrong, then don't worry about it. Judge him, see, everything will be squared away. So I'll end with that. I come in peace, but when I speak, it's meant for war. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Peace.